we'll back up here. Tomorrow, ladies and gents, this is Andrew with Creative Crush, and uh, just filling you in on some of the information that's coming up this week. Pretty good 4th of July. If you haven't had a chance to go see the uh, avocado bomb yet, uh, go give that a watch. I sacrificed a pair of pants for that video, so we'll have to see what happens there. Filler words. Filler words is something I'd like to talk about today. Filler words are words that we use in conversation whenever we don't know what to say next. Now, I try to avoid them, but I still do them. Like I will say, like the statement I just made, we'll see what happens next. That's kind of a filler phrase to say next. Now one thing I've discovered is that people will take you a lot more seriously and they will believe what you say more often if you speak using less filler phrases. One such phrase is all these different things. Like if you're making a list and you end with all these different things, it sounds like you don't know what you're talking about. It sounds like you didn't bother to learn all of the things that could be on the list so you just cover it with a, an on, you know. It, it's it doesn't really make it sound like you know what you're talking about. If you want to sound like you know what you're talking about, end the list at a point. Even if there are other things that could be on the list. That way, it sounds like you have created a list of what you're thinking of. There's a parameter. They know, okay, these things are fitting inside the list that he's describing. But if you end on all these different things, it means that there's more that you haven't shared with them. And either you're holding information from them, or you don't know all the information that could be. So you haven't done enough research is what it feels like. Filler phrases, one that I'm fairly guilty of, even in my writing, is, you know. It makes it sound like you are looking for validation. People who are looking for validation usually are not very confident in what they're talking about. And if you're not confident in it, you don't know enough about it. That's how people will perceive it. If you want to sound more confident, therefore be better perceived in what you're speaking about, avoid using those filler phrases, and you'll know them. Each of us has different ones that we use. The word a lot, or the phrase a lot, is not necessarily a filler word, or a filler phrase, if used appropriately. So there are certain ones that could be filler phrases for some people, and may not be for you. So think about what that is for you, and it'll help your, uh, your writing style be a little more precise, more clear. Yeah, so give that a shot. So far as filler phrases are concerned, they're not necessarily elements of bad storytelling but they often are associated with it. Like if you're listening to a storyteller, uh, you can really get a sense of whether or not they know what they're talking about by how often they use those filler phrases. So that's something to keep an eye out for. Filler phrases, are they using those? Filler phrases are an excellent thing to use in dialogue because it feels more real. You know, we are familiar with people using filler phrases when they're speaking. So if you're trying to make a character feel like an everyday person, you can use a filler phrase to accomplish that with more ease. You shouldn't overuse it though. Everything in moderation. When you're writing dialogue, you really want to focus on the reality of the situation. How are they going to present themselves? Are they true to their own character? If the characters behaved in certain ways in the past, it would take an extreme event to change the way that they're behaving in the future. That's how people will recognize it. If someone changes suddenly in a, in a character development, without any explanation, that's going to throw people off. They're not going to buy it. You want to avoid doing that as much as possible. You want to have reasons why people behave the way they do. Those reasons can develop on their own as you go. Effective dialogue as well should have a cadence to it. Over time, the people should increase in emotion or decrease. If you're keeping it consistent throughout where it's always the exact same phraseologies, you better have a good reason for doing that. Otherwise, people are going to get bored with it. When things get more intense, the people should speak more intensely. When things calm down, there should be a calmness to them, even a relief that is visible in the way that they communicate with each other. As well as for portions of the stories that you communicate, if they're written, that lack dialogue, you can avoid using filler phrases there as well. Simply because as people read them, if they're running into tons of filler phrases, then they're gonna just get tired of it they'll be able to see the repetitiveness coming in through the story that you're telling. And you want to keep people's attention. You don't want them to get bored or tired of what you're writing. People who get bored don't finish the story, and people who don't finish the story don't recommend it to others. In a nutshell, that means that you can avoid boredom for your readers and your viewers. 
by cutting out more of the dialogue pieces that don't belong. Trim it. Make it very clean and concise. People appreciate that. If you're going to lengthen out what you're talking about, have a reason for doing it. Avoid phrases like all these different things, you know, and so on. Phrases like that are just filler. They don't need them. Also, along these lines, avoid unnecessary metaphor. Like, if you don't need a metaphor at the moment, just say exactly what it is. You don't always need a metaphor. That's something I'm kind of guilty of in my own writing. I'll include metaphors too frequently. And I'm getting better at trimming it. Being concise in what you write takes it a long way. And people will be more willing to indulge in your story and share it with others. Let it influence their own ideas and their own thoughts. If you allow it the space so that they can fill it in. If you're using too many filler phrases, if you're using too much simile or metaphor, then you'll lose the interest of the reader. And avoid explaining every little detail to them. You don't want to do that. It'll leave your viewer feeling patronized. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you have anything you want to talk to me about, or any ideas you'd like me to cover for storytelling elements, put those in the comments, and we'll get creative again next time. Bye.